We're going to have uh, a few of our day-on-day uh, -day recipients uh, from this current cycle uh, share a little bit about their experience uh, applying to the application or applying to the day-on-day, -day, uh, what they're hoping to get out of the experience. Um, and so have them share that, and then we'll get into talking more about the specific fellowships and our offices and how we can support you. Um, I'm assuming introductions would be uh, important first. Uh, my name is Jesse Wheeland. I'm the Associate Director at the Office of National Fellowship. Uh, with me from ONF, uh, we also have Sam, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm <laughs> Sam. I am the Development Advisor at ONF, yeah. Program Coordinator. Yeah. Dr. Weber? Already okay. Hi, I'm uh, Dana Weber. I'm a, a associate professor in the uh, Department of Foreign Languages and Linguistics in the German program, and I'm also the uh, day, day research ambassador at FSU. So um, I am. I will talk a little more about the day, day the German Academic Exchange Service uh, later, but. Uh, yeah. Here you have three of our graduate students from the German program who all the three of them won a summer university uh, course and a scholarship for that. And so that is actually a great accomplishment for one university and one department in any one year. So yeah, well done. absolutely. Would all of you like to introduce yourselves, um, tell us a little bit more about your studies, um, and we'll go from there. So okay. just brief introductions. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kane. They show me. I'm a second year master's student in the Department of Modern Language and Linguistics. I'm also a German CA. And yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. And you will carry on for a Oh, yes. Um, I will begin my PhD program in the University of Michigan starting fall 2024. Um, hello, everyone. I am Asian McKinney. I'm a first year master's student. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Udo Oti, and I'm also a second year master's student, also a German teaching assistant, and I will be beginning my PhD studies in Ohio State University in the fall. This mm -hmm. So can can all of you talk a little bit about how you found these day by day opportunities and what ultimately led you to apply? Um. Dr. Weber told us about the opportunity if we were interested, and I've always been interested in studying anything to improve my language of German and German culture in itself, so I applied. Okay, perfect. I knew of the existence of Day Day. Um, this particular scholarship, I was told about it by Dr. Weber, but I want to go to law school, and the Day Day has a lot of different scholarships, and one that they have is where you can go and study the German government mm -hmm. for a while. And while I haven't applied to that one, I do about what the admission was. Okay. Yeah, just like what Asia said, the idea is like one of the most popular scholarships. And if you do have that on your resume, then it really says something big about you. So I have known about it even from um, my undergrad in Nigeria, but I never applied for it because I really didn't think, you know, I was qualified. But when Dr. Weber was like, oh, I think, you know, you should go for this. And I'm like, yeah, I would. And uh, she really helped us through the whole process, actually. But yeah, we applied for it. And I'm just excited that we put them. Have, have any of y'all gone, gone through, like, this type of application process before, like, applying to something like Day Um, Not specifically. They have the domain yeah. application processes. Yes. Yeah. Not specifically. Yeah. OK. Can you uh, can you talk about that writing process or what did you have to compile for these applications? What did you have to write about and uh, what was that process like? Yeah, um, starting with the portal, the portal was very difficult to maneuver. It was quite tricky and a lot of technical issues, but it just takes like you need patience to be able to maneuver the portal. And most importantly, up all your documents at end, your living slab, which is the um savior or resume, student's resume. You also need um, your motivations brief, reason why you want to study what, and most importantly, they are not looking for a perfect motivations brief. They're not looking for a perfect statement of purpose. What you want to see is your own personal experience, individual experiences, and why this is prompt, this prompts you to want to apply or go to Germany for a personal study in German program. And also any other qualifications you have that they mean to your German history. So for me back in Nigeria, I took um, 
a teacher's training program back in Brooklyn Institute. So I got a certificate for it, added it to my application. I also have a German B2 certificate, Scotland certificates for language proficiency. So it was also part of my document for application mm -hmm. and offers a recommendation letter, which Dr. Weber was very helpful with that, yeah. but also necessary. And yeah, that's a lot of components in there. Yeah. If you if you do not have a certificate of of like your level of German, your proficiency, that is fine because I did not have one and I submitted mine as with like a referral saying where my German level was. If you have a German level of B1 or above, they require that all of your materials be German. So you do not have to look at your starting out fresh. You don't have to worry about it. You can write it in English. But maneuvering through the portal and all of the files will be German. Mm -hmm. So you have to read German. Yeah. Well, um, I think that pretty much said everything. I actually did write, uh, you know, the in, you know, a couple of things that you need, which I'll just read them out. So just like Kenny said, the Lebenslauf, which is your um your CV, right? And then you also have your motivation brief, which is the statement of purpose. And just like Kenny said, not something you know with you know too much grammar or something. Or mostly about you know your personal experience why are you really interested and in how this program helped you because they would want to know that this program you really do need it and it's helpful to you and also you need a recommendation letter you don't necessarily need uh you know uh, a certificate to test your knowledge of german you can get a recommendation letter for an, the instructor mm -hmm. and then also um you need okay we did need the trans transcripts uh, because we're uh, we're applying for like a university course, so we did need uh, FSU transcript, and I also have to get my undergrad transcript. And then, just like Kenny also said, all these certificates that relates to your German learning, something you've done or something, you know, yeah, any experiences that you've had, you can also submit that as well to help your um, your application. Can all of you talk a, a little bit more about what you're really hoping to gain from this summer? I know you mentioned a little bit more exposure to like German government, you know, but can you talk a little bit more about what you're hoping to gain from this program to then, I know you're both starting graduate school, uh, your PhD is in the fall, but talk a little bit more about the program and where do you hope to be in, let's say, like three or four months? So the program is an intensive course. Um, I think 18 days of classwork and 25 hours of teaching per week. And so by the end of this program, first thing I want to do is be able to write my C1, get my C1 language proficiency certificate, and also experience German outside of the classroom. Um, Will this be your first time uh, traveling to Germany? Well, surprisingly, yes. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so experience gem German language and its culture outside of the classroom, outside of the textbook, or movies or things I've read people say. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be able to immerse myself in German culture for the first time and express it fully, which would also help with my future research as a PhD student and others. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'd like to go into law when I finish my master's and my JD, of course. And I hope to do international law, which would kind of require me to be well versed in at least one other nation's <laughs> politics somehow. So I guess Germany would be my place to start. Yeah, I, I have never been to Germany. And then whenever I always tell my students, they're like, we're surprised, like, why are you teaching German then? So I, it, it would be really, um, you know, really interesting for me to go there. But based on my PhD track, which is linguistics, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of, you know, I need to like see the difference in like first language speakers and second language learners and how we're able to like interact, how we're able to like understand each other. And there is no better place for me to do it than just to go to the country and, you know, interact with them and also in classroom. And also I want to see how this can even help us in like, you know, perfecting the kind of instruction we give in classroom. Like when we're teaching, how do we go about it? What do we, you know, they're going to be teaching us. So I'm going to be learning and I'm also going to be implementing this. And also, it's part of you know this big whole research that I'm doing. Yeah, I have more questions, but I also don't want to hog too much time. I would love to open it up to anyone else who might have any questions about studying in Germany day on day. And I know we'll get into more of the discussion of these particular fellowships in just a little bit. 
Um, but does anyone else have questions they would like to ask? Recipients? Yeah. Um, just a question for anybody. Um, is there something else that you guys have been doing to prepare yourself for what it's going to be like living in Germany and being able, and having to talk in German just casually to anybody? Well, do you speak German? Yeah. So, like, um, yeah. <laughs> prepared to like, is there anything that is going to be different that you have to prepare for, or is it just going to be you're going to go and just go with the flow, or is there? So kind of like differentiating from like classroom German yeah. versus like using German like in like I guess casual conversation seems like that. I I'd say that you have to be open to experience new cultures, but I think in the modern languages department we meet so many different people from so many different places that it's kind of our day to day at this point. Okay, exactly. And like we have teaching assistant, we have Nadia. Nadia is from Germany. We have Irina. She's from um, Austria. So. You know, communicating with these people have actually helped us a lot. And I think, you know, once you just get the, you know, yeah, you you would adapt. So yeah. um, with the program and the scholarship, most things that you'll have to have, like transportation and housing, that's all taken care of. And so you don't have to do anything to prepare for anything like that. Um, well, you do have to um, prepare, of course, for emergencies, personal for example, just in case purposes. <laughs> So that's all the necessities. You never can go for consumption. You need to be there for small for me. And depends on the scholarship you get and also the location of the scholarship you get. So the yeah, the fees for the bus and every other they also pay for the US travel allowance. And you say it's about seven hundred bucks for your travel allowance. Yeah. yeah. So of course, depending on your location, it might not be enough like, Probably need to add something from your own personal properties. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But they do help you with the to a degree with the accommodation, right? For yes. The, yeah. It, for the short term ones, it, it, like like Andy was saying, it depends on the scholarship. But the short term ones kind of will point them to dorms and organize that thing. Mm -hmm. But it's all different for each of them. Yeah. Do you have any pieces of advice for people who may not have? as much German proficiency as you have, but are still interested in studying abroad? Yeah, so it's for different levels. And yeah. as you yeah. just said, and if you are in the A1 level, because you're expected to write in English because they understand that your level of German is not up to par, the B1 mm -hmm. or the B2. So just collection documents show um, so much of your interest, why, why exactly it's all about the motivation for you and the recommendation you also get. Why do you want to do this? How is this going to help you? How is this going to benefit you? And yeah. So I want to add something to that. Um, just like you said, you have different um, scholarship. And there is this one that I told my students about the one in Munich. And that's the one my student applied for it. And he's qualified, but they do want him to like take some extra classes here in FSU. And then they said, um, you know, he has been shortlisted. And once he's done with those classes, then you know they'll get back to him. But he's yeah. got it, but he just has to, you know, take some classes in FSU. And then once he's done, he can go and do his junior year in um, Munich. Yeah. And that's also to say, if you do have the time to um, give yourself in preparation for that by taking German courses, writing courses, we all offer that in the departments. So this equips you and prepare you for every application you make in the future. Thank you. Other questions? I, I just, I don't have a question, but I wanted to just point out based on, on what was said here, I think these were really important points about applying. And so, because we, Jesse and I, we work with students with applications all the time. What is really important to keep in mind, as you heard, is time. Give yourself time. These are not things you do the night before, mm -hmm. these applications. Have patience. The portal sometimes I, I heard it, so our applicants here said that they fixed it in the meantime, but you never know. The internet, the whatever, there might be hiccups. When you write your uh, statements of purpose, be specific. I think we've seen so many statements of purpose in our lives where they say, Yeah, I want to go. I'm so enthusiastic. This would be the greatest thing of my life. Yeah, okay. And then so you need to write something specific. This is a, a a step in my career. 
I've done this. And that's why I'm going that this is going to, to further me on my on my way and stuff like that. So be about yourselves and be really specific, not just uh, general uh, statements. Mm -hmm. Have someone check your statements always and give them time as well. And uh, when you write, when you seek recommendations, it's best to ask real professors. I know that we have an inflation of this term a little bit. And so everyone kind of calls themselves a professor, but you want to have someone who's an assistant associate or full and not any, uh, like, especially for these higher level scholarships, uh, you know, it might be, your teaching assistant might be a wonderful person and they might be totally qualified. Mm -hmm. But if you compete against someone who comes with a full professor, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm on a committee and I'm like, oh, well, didn't they know a professor that was higher up to support them? Mm -hmm. So these are all aspects to practical things to, to keep in mind. And those relationships take time to build. Yeah. You know, and but you know, it starts by going to office hours, asking right. questions, you know, starting to slowly build that relationship. Because right now these applications have all passed. Like we are planning right now for fall applications yeah. and then spring applications for next summer. And so if there's the proficiency, like, well, I need to continue to practice or maybe find a tutor, you know, or it's building these relationships with faculty, you have plenty of time to do that. And the form that was mentioned, there is a form where, where the faculty can acknowledge your level of German, but then it's better if they know you mm -hmm. <laughs> and they can, like, you know, in good conscience, sign the form for you. So uh, that's another thing that to, to keep in mind. Yeah. Any other final questions for our uh, awardees? Because I don't want to hold you too long. I know you have to get to class, but any other final thoughts? What was your best and your worst experience applying for this? <laughs> um, my best experience was getting um, affirmation that I got to school again. <laughs> <laughs> and my worst experience was the blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was the worst was definitely portal. <laughs> the best was probably after getting the scholarship. And you have to submit the files. There's one file that's like, oh yeah, just put it back in, and you're done. That is the easiest thing they ever asked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the I think we've all agreed that the worst is the photo because it's like really difficult to navigate through. And the best was when I read yeah the email that was sent to me that I got the scholarship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we should like create a class that's just navigating the day-on-day -day portal. Well, yeah, they, 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 they changed it just this month, right? Yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah. when you when, yeah. when you mm -hmm. do the um application and for the portal, it tells you to move into a new page. Yeah, and it's that's like, like a lot very of easy. Uh, okay. Something about the portal is if you let's say you have one of your files and you want to go put that one file in so it's safe and stuff like that. You you put that one file in, the next time you come back, it's gone. You need to put them all back in, re put all of your. It's not like a file you can save. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'll just submit them all at the end. Each time you go in, you have to re put all of your information. Yeah, it's a it's a one one go application, isn't yeah. it? So yeah. you have to put everything on in in one sitting. So you have to prepare and stuff. Is that like we don't, yeah, we don't know what step is after. Mm -hmm. So if you fill out the first one, you're like, oh, wait, I don't have the information for this one. Well. So, so if you have to like create a dummy account and kind of go through just to see what all the questions are. But it won't but, let you get like no. the red asterisks. Um, that's like, oh, this has to be. Like I said, we'll, we'll have to think about a course. Well, you see, maybe you have to, uh, you just go do a trial run and yeah. risk uh, that your files are gone, but then at least you know what they want, I'm assuming. Because okay. I applied for it too, I don't remember so exactly. I, I got the day of the yeah. 2021 for faculty and it was the same. So uh -huh. it, was, it was a lot of nerves and everything, but then it was worth it, you know, so. Yeah, maybe they'll get like three or four Dana Weber applications next year, I don't know, just depending <laughs> on how <laughs> they're they, They're not there. So mm -hmm. the, the files aren't just there. So yeah. Unless you submit and then, yeah. yeah. Did you have a? Yes, uh, we, we also have to add to download Adobe to be able to yeah. open each files. That was the worst. Yeah. yeah. So, so we have to, you, you can't just open with a PDF or open now or anything. It has to be specifically Adobe to be able, able to see what's in the files mm -hmm. or filter files and things like that. So. Yeah.
Well, thank you all for, for being here and sharing your thoughts about the day out day. Congratulations again. Yeah. Okay. So, Dana, would you like me to go first? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, nice. <laughs> I also want to encourage everyone if you came later, take take goodies, take sweets. Uh, we it's all here. Don't don't feel you have to hold back. Oh. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, so again, my name is Jesse Wieland. Uh, and so at the Office of National Fellowships, which I, I would say, let me start by defining what a fellowship is. I think that can be kind of a nebulous term to students, but the easiest way that I can uh, describe it is that it's a scholarship with a learning outcome. So day a day perfectly fits into that category. So for many students applying to uh, fellowships with our office, that is for foreign language study. We have plenty of opportunities there. Many of our students are applying for uh, research opportunities, both domestic opportunities or abroad. Uh, there are very unique leadership development, cohort-based programs, and then just dependent on your academic background, you can just find an extreme laundry list of opportunities through our website at onf.fsu.edu, um, or by talking to your faculty, talking about people in your department, um, you might find very unique uh, scholarships through Florida State University, um, or other national opportunities that are for college of business students, or for physics students, or whatever that may be. And so if you always find, if you find an opportunity that isn't listed on our website, feel free to bring it to our office. We'd be happy to read through that with you, break down the application, because what you'll often find is that all of these applications are asking different iterations of the exact same questions. That's just who are you? Why do you want this? Where do you see yourself going? So if you can do that for one, you can do it for, you know, two, three, five, ten others. Um, but um, let me get through here. Um, so I kind of already touched on this uh, just a little bit. Um, and so for students coming into our office, some of them know explicitly, like, this is what I want to apply to, that I've always wanted to apply to, you know, whatever that may be. Uh, but for many students, I would say the majority of students that are coming in, um, they're unfamiliar with this application process, with these types of fellowships. And so those initial meetings, we are happy to sit down and talk with you about what are uh, what are you involved in on campus? What are the things that you care about? What are the experiences that you're hoping to have as an undergraduate or graduate student uh, at Florida State University? Uh, and we're happy to give you recommendations. Um, we are here to mentor you through the entire application process. And so as our panelists were describing, uh, it's not just the statements of purpose, the personal statements, it's the language evaluation forms, the recommendation letters, and then dependent on the opportunity, uh, affiliation letters and many other components there. Um, and so we're, we're help you, helping you manage that entire package, but then also meet those deadlines. And what you'll often find is the fall semester is all apply, 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 apply. So we have a major application cycle that really begins in mid-August and lasts all the way until when uh, day a day applications are typically due in December, January. So end of fall, uh, beginning of spring. Uh, and then <laughs> we break for winter break, but then it picks right back up in January all the way through March. And so um, you're working with concurrent deadlines. And so to manage all of that, um, that's where we step in. Um, and you'll also find, yes, there's over 60 awards that we work with uh, pretty consistently in all different fields of study. Um, and so to qualify for, you know, many day out day opportunities, you don't need to be a German major. You need to articulate how German is crucial to your studies and to your future. Um, but a lot of these fellowships love to see that intersection between your field of study and your passions and this language, this opportunity, why do you need that? That's all that makes sense. Um, so kind of why we're here today, um, you'll see throughout the semester, we are always promoting different fellowship opportunities, not just through workshops like this. Um, we've, I've been with the office, uh, next year will be my 10th year, just hard to say, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but that is uh, 10 years worth of alumni of these different programs, students that have now moved on to graduate school that have now moved on to uh, their professional careers, and we invite them back all the time to talk about how this experience really shaped their education at Florida State and after. Um, and so you'll find all these different workshops on our website. We'll update that uh, every semester. Uh, 
help you find the opportunities that you are most passionate for. And then as I've been saying, um, mentor you through that process. I'm gonna let Dr. Weber um, delve more into day a day specifically, but just to kind of give you a very brief sampling. Uh, and if it's impossible to talk about all of the STEM opportunities, all the language opportunities and international experiences, domestic experiences. Um, so I am talking about three fellowships out of the dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens that we work with, uh, but a couple that I thought were going to be most relevant, which I mean, first and foremost with day a day. Um, I primarily, on, on a yearly basis, work with students that are applying for the STEM fellowships, the research fellowships through day a day, um, which various, is, are, is anyone a STEM major? Like I know, we, okay, a couple in here. Um, have you heard of like the National Science Foundation, those REU programs, research experience for undergraduates? Fantastic. I think those are very similar to what day a day offers. Um, so NSF REUs paid summer research opportunities, but domestic. And the nice thing about that application process is you can apply to as many NSF REUs as you would like, as is feasible, as is relevant uh, to what you're studying. And the day-to-day -day application is really similar. The, the RISE program specifically uh, is you can choose up to three, unless they've changed it, but you can choose up to three research labs uh, that are relevant to your studies, and you can submit three cover letters, one to each lab. Um, you can obviously only select one, um, but it just greatly increases your chances of being selected for one of those opportunities. And I think you need to at least be a sophomore uh, in order to apply, but you're also eligible as a junior, and I believe as a senior as well, unless I'm mistaken. But um, they're also open to uh, internship programs uh, as well for professionals. Uh, and so day day can be a part of your academic career from the time that you're a sophomore, if you would like, up until the time that you're a graduate student and beyond as well. Um, and we were just briefly chatting, Dr. Weber and I, uh, about a, a new partnership between day day and Gilman. Um, but the Gilman Scholarship, and this is one that Sam is also going to be uh, uh, really pivotal in helping me uh, recruit for this coming year, um, is a lot of different things, uh, but the, to kind of boil it down is that if you are receiving a federal Pell Grant uh, and you are interested in an international program that counts for credit, which any program through Florida State University and many that you'll find uh, through other third parties or other universities would qualify, um, but you pitch to Gilman, uh, this is what I plan to do abroad, and that could be during the fall, during the spring, during the summer, during an academic year, and this is how it's relevant uh, to, my, to my academic goals, my professional goals, and it's up to $5,000 to apply towards that program, and it can be stacked with other scholarships. Um, this is a very fresh on my mind because I just finished uh, a, a, a reviewing for Gilman uh, for their national review process. I had 60 applications to get through. So I would love to talk to you about what to do and not to do to have a competitive application. Um, don't use AI. Um, but anyways, uh, I'm, I'm not kidding. Please don't use that. Uh, but anyways, um, it kind of goes back to what we were just saying with the lack of detail, the inability to answer how, how does this relate? Um, it sounds flowery and nice, but it's but it's not specific when you peel back the layers. I mean, I might be a literature person, but I <laughs> got something like that recently, and I looked at it, and I read two sentences, and I'm like, this is AI. Because no. it's so obvious. It's so very I obvious. Think, yeah, I think maybe if, if you're from our field, I mean, you yeah. know, we're trained to see the yeah. text. And it's so bland and so inhuman. I mean, you see the machine yeah. talking to you through it. Yeah. Even though he talks nicely. As soon as I it's see like the TV, rich so... tapestry of my experience, yeah. it's like, get that shit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. But, uh, but anyways, um, and so, so Gilman is a really fantastic opportunity. And then it, so the standard Gilman scholarship, like I said, is up to $5,000. They do have critical need language awards, which is up to 8,000. German does not qualify, but for many linguistic students, I know you're studying many different languages. Um, and then there's also, if you are the dependent of a, a, an active duty military member, there's the Gilman McCain scholarship. Um, and uh, but regardless, this is one where they I think nationally it's about like a one in four chance of being nominated and you can apply early. So we have an application cycle this coming fall semester in October. We have another one uh, in the spring. Um, 
Now, Fulbright uh, is one of the more, I guess, name brand, like recognizable <laughs> fellowships. Has anyone heard of Fulbright previously? Okay, a couple, sure, awesome. So this is one that we're actually recruiting for right now and would love to talk to you. Uh, uh, and so if you are a rising senior, uh, if you're a graduate student, um, you need to have your bachelor's degree before you can even apply. Um, but this is one uh, and this this reemphasizes Dr. Weber's point about coming and talking to us early because you literally apply for this a full year in advance of when you actually start the program. So we have a campus deadline. I think it's August 28th this year, but regardless, it's the end of August. And that is for a full and complete application, rec letters, full essays, everything. Um, because we have a campus interview process in September with our faculty committee, um, which uh, Dana, I believe you're also on. No, just Marshall. No, no, just Marshall. No, 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 Marshall. Okay. Uh, maybe we can, uh, you know, get you to go. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, um, to interview and get feedback on your application uh, and then formally submit by the beginning of October. But um, Fulbright, and I'm happy to, if people are interested at the end of the presentation, I can bring up the website. But the standard uh, awards that people typically look at when you're considering a Fulbright are going to be the academic grants. That can be pure research. Uh, that can be a graduate degree. That could be a master's, maybe the first year of a PhD program. Um, or it could be a creative art project. Um, and then we have the English teaching assistantships, um, which would put you in a classroom Anywhere from elementary school, which sounds like a nightmare to me, but some people love it, um, up to university level or adult education. And depending on the country, they might have that, that entire full spectrum. Um, so you're with a partner teacher. Uh, you're there as that cultural liaison, but you're also there beyond just teaching English. Uh, what aspects of American culture are you hoping to share? How, what is your pedagogy? Like what, uh, what materials are you hoping to use in the classroom that might be uniquely beneficial um, to the student population that you are working with? Um, and these applications do need to be very country specific, but that's something that we can work with you throughout that application process. And so, like I said, we're recruiting now for something that's not due for four months uh, because that, it, that four months is not always spent writing, it is spent doing research, connecting with your faculty, um, you know, doing reading on your own, looking into current events. And so we really try to break down that process um, for you. So this slide is really just to show we have a very, this is a very small sampling of many different awards that we work with. And so I think you would be pretty hard pressed to find something that you're not interested in if you really deep dive into our office. Um, any quick questions? about these fellowships or maybe any others that you've heard of that you're interested in? Well, let me get to the next slide. Uh, so I've kind of been touching on this a little bit throughout the presentation, um, but why work with our office? Um, this application process, um, I, I hope your undergraduate career uh, is, was not like mine. I was asked uh, once uh, when I applied to college, who are you and what do you want to do? And then no one asked again uh, until I was, a, well, applying to graduate school. Uh, and I was like, I don't know who I am. Um, and so this, these, these processes really force you to stop and take stock of what you are doing at Florida State. What are the things that you care about and how does this because what I always tell students is when you're applying to these awards, we can assume anyone submitting an application is qualified for the opportunity. But why do you need this opportunity? Why is this pivotal to your future? Um, it does, we hope, uh, improve your writing ability and your communication skills. Uh, because the hardest part for me is communicating on paper. I put me into an interview. I feel much more confident about being able to talk about myself and my experiences. And so hopefully you're developing and growing in both. And some of these processes like Fulbright, Marshall, Rhodes, other scholarships you may have heard of, um, does require that interview session. And so we also prepare you for that. Have sample questions uh, from many years of applicants that have gone through that process and reported back to us, hey, these are the questions that I was asked. Um, if you can apply to a fellowship, you can apply to graduate school, professional school, anything after Florida State. Like I said, these applications are very, very similar in what they ask. Building your campus network and your off-campus network. I'm, I hope all of you come back from Germany with like <laughs> connections in country with universities there, and I'm confident that you will. Um, and then, of course, continue to see like how all these opportunities connect to one another. Um, but contact information. Um, 
I always joke that you can tell your mom we're on Facebook, uh, but I don't really use Facebook anymore. Uh, we're really trying to transition to LinkedIn. Uh, so that is a project that uh, Sam will uh, be working on over the next uh, couple of weeks. And so we'll get the LinkedIn up. When that is up, follow us there. Um, or just follow us on Instagram for the time being. Um, we'll post about all these workshops, especially for Fulbright um, over the coming weeks. Um, but we are a very, a very small office, uh, and embarrassingly, I forgot to update our contact information to include Sam, uh, so I do apologize. Um, but you can also talk to Keyshaw, but he's graduating in uh, three weeks. Uh, so, so anyways, um, feel free to reach out to us, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, thank you. Okay. Can I can I add a thought to this? I would love you to add a thought or two. No, just one. It, it just <laughs> what you said just reminded me when I when I was an undergrad student, I got a, a day out there too, mm -hmm. and it was I was very young, like most of you here, and it kind of was a big insight for me to understand when they were telling me, well, they're gonna give you money. These are state agencies. Why state agencies? Why would I give you money? So you have to basically, when you apply for this, convince someone with money, why are you the one that they should give it to when they have thousands of people there who are also asking? And so that was like, a, in my in my mind, it was a, a complete change of, because you always think, oh yeah, I'm writing an application, I'll give it to them, they give me something. But to just think about myself in terms of, but why would they give it to me? and not to you or, or you, and then I'm left on the outside. The changes of how, it changed how I thought about myself in the process of applying and how I write my letters and how I promote myself. Yeah, and and again, just because I was, I was just on this panel for Gilman, you know, there are fellowships that are built that you know they want to be that point of access like the nsf reus and maybe those the rise opportunities mm -hmm. uh to an extent it really depends on your your academic field they want to be that point of access for you to help train you to then maybe in a few years apply to a full yeah. ride apply to one of these other opportunities and so like as i'm reading through the you know not to circle back to you know when we're talking about ai but you know reviewers are trained it's like i'm looking for authenticity i'm not looking for perfect grammar like, I just want to hear your story. And students sometimes, like, don't always understand, like, the gravity of their experiences yeah. and how unique those experiences are. And it's like, please write about that. Tell me. Yeah. Um, you know, because I'm much more willing to give grace to an applicant that their application maybe isn't fully polished, but it's like, but it's genuine. It's and genuine. I can see that potential, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's what a lot of these programs really want to invest in. And then down the line, when we get to a Fulbright or a Rose or a Marshall application, whatever that is, that's where we can really step in and be like, okay, well, let's, you know, polish this up. But, you know, but it's fine. You know, uh, you you'll have been through the ringer once or twice before. We, so. we live in capitalism and the work is investment. They yeah. invest in you. Why would they invest in you and not something else? That's yeah, absolutely. For me, it was the crucial yeah, 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 yeah. It's weird having yeah. to like learn how to pitch yourself as yeah. like as an investment, as you said. Yeah, uh, but but that comes from showing your future goals and that potential. You know, the more you can specify, and sometimes I'll have students that sit down and they're like, I don't, I don't know, I could do a, a, B, or C, all of the, and and that's fine. You know, it's like with a lot of these programs, you know, lean into the one that is most genuine and authentic to you at this time. And if that changes in the future, they're not going to come back and be like, okay, did you do it exactly how you said, you know, give us that money, but it's not going to happen. Um, you know, any other like general final thoughts or questions about anything that we've been talking about today or for our panelists? Anything like that? Okay. Well, thank you all for well, I did have, um, if, if Dan, Dr. Webb, if you'd like to talk a little bit more about some of these specific day on day nuances. I um, can show yeah. a few uh, fellowships and scholarships because as, as you heard, there are so many that, you know, once any of you decide to apply, then we will sit down with you and work on the details and every, on the specifics, but there are quite a few. And so I, I would just like to show you the a little bit of the repertoire they have. And uh, do we have any graduates? I know we have one graduate student. Is everyone else a graduate student here or? You're all undergrads, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what I will. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm also going to talk about graduate development. Right? Yeah, and also I think we'd be remiss if we also didn't talk about the more Beakley scholarship. Well, so. but 
Yeah, that's... Yeah, we can save that for the yeah, end. Yeah, for now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, uh... Because that's another story. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I mean, I was reminded of Asia, what you're saying. Unfortunately, MGIP, that you were mm -hmm. thinking about this, is continued. Because during the, but there is another one, and there is one graduate student from our program who finished her, her she was a DA with us, and she got into another one uh, into the Bundestag, yeah, which is even CDYX. better. No, that's the lower level. I have, I forgot the name, but it's not related to the AD, and she's right now working in the Bundestag with someone. So, uh, but she finished, like, she'll be, she was like you, our next year, she finished her. Her MA with us, and then she applied. So, okay. So the um, the yeah, the, the German Academic Exchange Service, Deutsche Akademische Austausch Austausch and it is a great source of funding because the uh, Germans invest in education and in in um, international internationalization of their universities. So that's a big a big um, project for them. Um, and I'm going to say that there was a little dent in all of this funding through the pandemic. And so they had uh, some scholarships that were discontinued, but then they picked up with others again, but they're not, not back to, to full throttle as they used to be. And for instance, the, the, um, the summer courses are a scholarship that they went back to, but not something else like the MGIP. So, okay. Um, Let's see, yes. well, yeah, this is what it looks like. Yeah, so maybe it's worth um, knowing where to go, dad.org mm -hmm. in, in English. And then um, you, you already went to the, can we show the, the path how to find them? Oh, sure, sure, yeah. Because that's um, the easiest, you, you can find them yourself. So go back so to the to home. Yeah. yeah, okay, Let's see. And then you, you have, a, if you scroll down. Okay. Uh, oh no, this is the different site. No, no, no. Uh, I can't see it. Can I? Can oh, I yeah, yeah, you are welcome to. Yeah. It says, hello. Okay. Here, find funding. Um, and then you have a scholarship database which is going to be a lot. So you find everything in there, it's hard to, hard to navigate. Then you have uh, the undergraduate opportunities. Um, and then when you go by graduate or undergraduate opportunities, you can scroll through them and you see what they have. So this is the easier way. For instance, study scholarship for graduate to seniors. This is the rise that, mm -hmm. that uh, Jesse was mentioning research. Um, research grants then and then you have this Gilman they are day Germany so I don't you know I don't want to go through all of them mm -hmm. but um of the undergraduate ones which ones would you be interested in for instance the which one should I show you study scholarship or um German studies research grant or let me start with this one because this is new yeah and because um this is um it provides uh, for the Gilman DAD scholarships and um they're funded by this and that, but you have to be uh in a, I think you have to be in an exchange. When, yeah, and so we the, have exchanges at FSU, that's why I was showing this. I don't know if you're familiar with the Center of Global Engagement. But we have uh, direct exchanges between FSU, Universities of Wuppertal. Um, if you're in the School of Business uh, at Munich, uh, LMU, and then Oldenburg University. So I think this would yeah. be one of those that can fund you while you go there. The, the way that the review process works is because Gilman has these partnerships with uh, between, well, now Germany, France, New Zealand, and a few other countries as well. So that's noted in the review process. And so what that means is 
we're able to strongly endorse candidates, and that essentially means like they're this is a definite recipient, and then we're able to just endorse. And so they have this additional funding, these 40 awards, that it's like they're, they're only going to uh, students applying to Germany. They can select more, but uh, it just kind of increases your chances of being nominated by applying to these partnership institutions and programs. So, And you could, uh, technically, you can go to uh, Germany to FSU with the direct exchanges using your financial aid and you're treated as if you're on our own campus and so forth. Uh, but I guess it doesn't yeah. hurt to have a little more money if, you, yeah. if you're interested in applying for these. Mm -hmm. So this is a good one because it actually works, I think, with, with FSU. Um, and it has, I'm, I'm going to show you what they, they give you, one to 12 months, um, funding up to $5,000, and then a meeting as, and you get accident, liability insurance and so forth. Mm -hmm. So um, it is for undergraduate students. So this is one example. And yeah. like I said, if you decide to apply, then then we can go and read this in all this detail and, and yeah. look for the all of the information we, we can get you or what can we well we have some stem students so if we want to look at the rise program too you like, want to talk about the rise because you're you or we could look at one of the other ones yeah whatever if you want to look at the german language study so let's yeah. see this is the university summer course grant and here you have um you can be uh, students in undergraduate and master's degree programs in all disciplines. And uh, undergraduate students must be, have must have completed whatever, two years of academic studies and so forth. And then, and then you go to see the course list, right? Because this is what, what you all also did, okay? And then you have to start to search. That's what I'm saying. We I cannot we cannot introduce you to all of these in detail because it's just too much. Yeah. But let's see. Um, and here, well, you don't. This is the first test. test. Yeah. No, <laughs> you go like what kind of course you want? A yeah. language test. What uh, language course? Uh, only German and a topic. You can say you're an engineer, languages and culture. Uh, law, economy, and what else, not, or medicine. Let's see what they have for medicine. And then you go and look for the courses, and then it sends you to the course, you look at it, and this is what you then apply for concretely in your application. So you see they're a little bit complex. Okay, so this is, uh, but this would be a university summer course, which is not necessarily on, on language, and then we have specifically for German language skills, if anyone is interested, you have, again, several. So learning German in Germany, but I think for this one, you need to know a little bit already. So improving your German or language in short courses. Uh, so you see, if I, I, I don't want to go through each of these because it's going to drive you crazy. And at the end, it's just confusing. But you see how many opportunities there are and for this reason, I would um, encourage you, you know, we can share this, this uh, website with you. And if you're interested, go and play around with it and see what is there. And um, if you decide to apply, then contact us. And I think that's the best way to do it. And yeah. if you sit down with Leanne Bauer over at the Center for Global Engagement, she's she leads the global exchanges at Florida State University and would be able to break down the specific universities that we partner with, we would be able to help you find the relevant coursework that you need. Um, so yes, I think there's a healthy amount that you can do to play around with the website, but also don't lose your mind over it. Like go and talk to the professionals who already have this kind of figured out and can really help you. But I don't know how to get to the, there was a, there is one, one menu where mm. you can distinguish between undergraduates and graduates when you when you search on it. Where is it? Because this looks like. Was it in the email that you sent me, the original link? I think so. So I can pull that back up as well. Um, or it might still be up on under mail under this tab. No, you know what? Let me let me just. I'm sorry. This is exactly. No, we did say we did what? say the portal was. Was rough. Uh, yeah, okay. 
and oh, this is what I was going for. They are the D E E N. So this mm -hmm. is the German. They are the English version. And then you have here, you see scholarships for Germany, scholarships for going abroad, international programs, or not. Scholarships for Germany is going to hopefully give you no. It gives you the option. It should yeah. give you the option, graduate or under. I don't know what it is. This is. You might be right. They changed this like what yesterday. <laughs> A lot of fellowship websites have recently changed, like literally in the last few weeks. Uh, so I've had to fumble my way through a couple. Uh, is there a reason they change? Yeah. It's just like that time of year. It's after all the all the deadlines have passed, and so they're like before the new cycle starts. They're like, let's screw with it right now, uh, and so. <laughs> Um, this is not looking like I well I checked them like what two days ago to yeah, be fair yeah. I'm convinced there's actually free money somewhere at the end of this website if you know how to get yeah, to it you know? uh, yeah yeah there's something going on. so anyway <laughs> let's go back to, to what you what you had in the beginning there are like, I could name enough. three fellowships that are notorious for their websites, uh, Humanity in Action, uh, Dodd, uh, and, um, oh goodness, it was Hertz, I think, one of the STEM fellowships that we work with, where every time you go to it, it's just like, I don't know what this is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it also goes to tell you something about Germany and their culture and their ways of thinking, which is, you want something from us, you do the work. <laughs> put, the, put the effort in. You know, so that's that's. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, I'm also I, in culture studies, so that's what this yeah. tells me. But you see, we we were going to undergraduate opportunities, and here is also graduate opportunities. So there is a way to find this, and obviously yeah. it is online. And then it will be the same for graduate students. You have the studies uh, stays, which is interesting because you can, um, as a master's student, you can go there for a year or even for a full degree in Germany. So, and it is, I think, for different uh, fields. So, um, and you have the your fields here, for instance, mm -hmm. application requirements, and then you the, and then you have to say you're a graduate mm -hmm. student, and then it tells you the application requirements. So, okay. see, this is how you, and then bookmark yes. the page once you find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So this is the English side. They're using the American term graduate school, but of course that doesn't that doesn't exist in Germany or indeed almost anywhere else in the world. It seems to be for master's students. Is, yes. Are there any fellowships for PhD? Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Might be whatever. No, no, but I think for I mean for PhD you also have the other ones which are affiliated with the DAD, but not okay. specific mm -hmm. DAD, like for instance Humboldt. And yeah, things like that. Yeah. yeah. But let's see. Uh, oh. <laughs> Going a PG Germany. This is cool. Hey. But is this starting afresh? <laughs> because I'm already in a PhD. Yeah. You want to I don't know. I <laughs> there's too much material, so you I we don't know this on top of I our see. heads. We're just promoting yeah. it. Yeah. But but if you you're interested, uh Look into this and also come and talk to me. Are you in? I know you're in modern languages. In what program are you? They have me in Spanish. You're in Spanish? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we can look at funding for like dissertation, yeah. like research. If you're looking for that, it, like OGFA would be a really great resource. So we're the, the Office of National Fellowships is for undergraduate students. We still work with grad students, but the Office of Graduate Fellowships and Awards would have. Um, more resources just because they work with that population regularly. Um, but but yeah, so keep it keep us posted. But we can now is the time to be researching and finding what's out there. Are you where are you in your PhD? Um, just finishing up the first year. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so you have. But I'm doing course. dissertation uh -huh. research this summer because I didn't feel like waiting. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, well, I was, yeah. <laughs> see, see now, if you go through them, uh, okay. there are some like this. So this is the re uh, the research uh, grant. This is, for instance, one where you can put the flyer. Yeah, nice. And uh, let's see, which one is it? 
German Studies Research Grant. This is the one that I had in 21 that I was talking mm -hmm. about because it's also for faculty. Oh, so it, it gives you like two or three months in Germany in the summer for research if you want. Um, and then short term, you know, so this is what I'm saying. I went into the graduate, um, into the graduate opportunities here. Mm -hmm. And it's it's one of those you have to go through them and see what they what they offer. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. of course, you can always try for the award. And I know we're <laughs> running a little low on time, uh, so you're welcome to stay. But if you do need to head out, please. Uh, I know we're getting close to four. So, are you interested in any of this? For instance, universe uh, language skills we looked already right. Professional is for higher level uh, STEM fields. This one is interesting, but this is um, a different one. You have to do contemporary German literature and you bound to a library. So, mm -hmm. no. What's your field in Spanish? I mean, what is your focus of research? I mean, I don't work with Spanish, so but I work I work with indigenous languages in the Amazon, but I do general ah we need general to linguistics, etc. I don't this is not my research, but I I kind of crushing on that in a certain way. So oh, okay. Uh, yeah. We should talk anyway about the German settlements in Peru. No. I think there's a really interesting language context scenario to be. Do you know Glenn Penny? H. Glampenny, which is books about that. You have to, you have to mean, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we can talk. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is, so that's why I'm saying these are the graduates, um, the graduate opportunities. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then I didn't, I, I just wanted to, to touch upon the, you know, show everyone the undergraduate, how the undergraduate menu looks, how the graduate menu looks, invite you to um, research it yourselves because it would take three days to read everything out, which isn't practical. Uh, however, this, this is only a part of them. And I have at home a PowerPoint of 80 page, 80 slides, 80 <laughs> row, with German scholarships to the AD and affiliated. So this is what, what we can also look into once you are decided to apply, you have explored the webpage here and you kind of make up your mind and then we can help you on your way because finding scholarships is not easy. Yeah. In general. But that's why we have this yeah. presentation right now is there's nothing to do right now except find the opportunities and then we can set a timeline for the late summer beginning of the fall for when we need to start actually writing the applications and connecting with faculties. So uh, this is this is what you want to find. Perfect. This is where you want to go and check it out, and then you'll find undergrad and grads. Yeah, I'm sorry this is so unspecific, but it is complicated and very diverse. And so we cannot just cover it in one slim presentation because right. that would be, that would not do justice to it. Mm -hmm. Any other final questions for today? Yes. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, Went over this, but what would be the first step to trying to get a meeting with somebody like one on one to talk about this? Um, so you're welcome. So if you go to the ONF website, um, you can find either Sam's contact information, mine. Uh, feel free to email us and let us know the days and times that you're typically available, or you can just email onf at fsu.edu. That's going to go to all of us. Okay. Um, you've literally met 50% of the office, so mm -hmm. we're like right across the hall, we're very tiny. Um, and uh, we're still we're, we're here throughout the summer, so we're happy to meet virtually with you if you're back home or abroad, um, just to, you know, touch base, kind of see what you're interested in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Are, you, are you in a German course right now? Are you taking a, one of the basic courses in German? Yeah, I mean, I'm the, for the day, day um, I'm also the first step to sit down and, you know, okay. once we sit down, we're going to leave through all of this and see what, yeah. what, uh, you're looking for and then um you you know i'll give you more specific information and then you can work with with jesse and both him and myself on your application just send me an email i'm in in german in different board 316 so where's my thank you yeah so anyway uh i email for everyone 
I'm interested is this. Oh, it's a great one. They rhyme too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, right? Oh, that one? No, and green is a bad color for visual. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, a lot of colors. Hey. But thank you everyone for attending. Uh, we'll hang out for a few more minutes if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, Dana was gracious enough to bring a lot of cookies and German snacks. So feel free to grab it on your way out, uh, as well as any relevant flyers that you might find as well. And they are made in Germany, both the knobbers and the and the butter cookies. They're from Aldi. So get like that, that handful of uh, <laughs> of bears.